Eu. Ei, 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 ei. Um, you came from heaven above. <laughs> What's up, dudes? My name's Erin. Uh, I'm Nicole. This is Dude That's Fucked Up. From the yeah. earth to the grave, from the grave to the sky. <gasps> Lord, I lift your name up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, this is part two yeah. of uh, are the praise and worship uh, <laughs> of, <laughs> of Hill- Hillsong Mega Church. Uh, B-side... Uh, <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yeah, it's, we're talking. To, we're talking about the hill, the Hillsong Church. This is part improm too. Ooh. Oh, we got a little. We we got a little carried away in our research of um, the mega church Hillsong, mm-hmm. and we realized as we were doing last week's ep- episode, like midway through, we still have a lot of shit to talk oh, about. Yeah. So a whole episode worth. <laughs> We decided, uh, you know what? Let's uh, let's break this up, y'all. Yeah. So um, if you haven't listened to last week's, go back and listen to that because we're we're just going to continue on from where we yeah. left off. Also, uh, we're, we don't really have any business to cover or any fucked up of the week because we're doing this on the same day we recorded the last episode <laughs> and we can't even fake it because we didn't even have any advance warning. We're just winging it. But I yeah. do want to say in terms of baby watch 2018, I have thought of what I would like your baby to, to refer to me as. And that okay. is don't share. <laughs> <laughs> this is my don't share Nicole. <laughs> Oh my God! If you guys don't remember from last week, <laughs> that's the name of uh, the pastor of Vu Church, <laughs> whose husband, uh, what's his name, uh, Rich Wilkerson, is the pastor that married Kim and Kanye. Yeah, I think if it was like a, I wish it was a feminist church, and she and she was pastor Doncher, and then he was. Pastor of Doncher. Of Doncher. <laughs> That'd be incredible. Uh, just, uh, oh my God. Blessed so, be the fruit, bitch. Blessed be the fruit, bitch. Well, <laughs> man, this fucking church uh, is so wild that yeah. last week we were talking about all the celebs that were in it. And we were talking about the hype priests. The, yeah. The Instagram worthy fucking streetwear that they're always decked out in, <laughs> that they all kind of look the same. Their websites are all the same. There's like different, very similar churches to Hillsong. Yeah. That are mega churches, um, including the Rich Wilkerson headed and Don Cher headed <laughs> church. Um, so yeah, we were we were talking about a lot of that and how it's just kind of kind of crazy and how much money they make from like the the music that they the music label that they have it's so much yeah um and they rent out all the like concert spaces and it 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 is very much like a a, you're going to a cool fucking show or something it's hot right now it's very hot it's trendy very hot people are digging it um yeah but that's on the surface that's all surface level shit. The branding and marketing for the for Hillsong is incredible, and a bunch of of these other kind of maybe loosely affiliated churches. Yeah. Um, uh, so a lot of this is on the surface looks super cool and welcoming, and really just something that you want to be a part of. I think. Yeah. Like if I saw if I saw um, a pastor who looked like this who is like preaching about you know acceptance and tolerance and all that I'd be like hell yeah and that's kind of what what he does and I had mentioned last week that um, the head of the New York branch of Hillsong uh, Carl Lentz is kind of a mealy mouth motherfucker yeah because he's he kind of doesn't really. Um, he doesn't give the full picture of like what they're actually preaching. Yeah. Um, he just makes it seem like everybody's welcome. Yes. Like look how cool and hip I'm dressed. That means I'm dressed just like you. That means you're (laughs) like, you're going to fit right in. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 
so people see this and they're like, oh, this is like a progressive place. Yeah. Um, where everybody seems to be welcome. And like, look at all these cool celebrities that are, that are going like, look at how cool Chris Pratt is. He, he's like in all these cool movies that I love and he's so lovable and affable. Um, and Justin Bieber, you know, he's, he's cool and, and well, he's not, but you know, he's like young. (laughs) He's young. (laughs) He's young and rich, young and rich. And that's cool, I guess. This church must be doing something right to attract all these cool celebs, these really rich people, yeah. whatever. I so. feel like, too, they, like, preach acceptance and stuff, but it's their strings attached. It's like, yes, we are, uh, we feel, we want, you're all our brothers and sisters. We all, we accept all of you. But listen. If you're a dude and you like other dudes, or you're a girl and you like other girls, uh, that's, like, not really cool with the Bible. So, like, yeah. we're going to have to talk to you about that. We might even try and fix you. Uh, on the down low, though, because yeah. on the surface, we're accepting. But, yeah, like, if exactly. you want to get married to someone else, like, yeah, I guess it's legal. But, like, we're not we don't doing like that it. here. Yeah. 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 We don't do that here. Uh, yeah. It's, um, it's very it, – it seems like they – they would definitely be accepting of all that, but unfortunately, that is not the case. Uh, as we mentioned in the last episode, this is uh, an evangelical, Pentecostal, very hardcore, conservative Christian-based church. Yeah. Sorry. It looks like it's not, but it definitely is. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe some of the- wolf in sheep's clothing. <laughs> and maybe some <laughs> of the people who go there don't really necessarily realize that yet. Um, because of some of these, these, some of these pastors, I don't think that they are malicious or they're, they're doing anything necessarily like, uh, to, you know, target LGBTQ people or whatever, and like make them the, the subject of their sermons at all. If anything, they avoid the topic completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird. So, Isn't that weird that, like, people who believe what they're saying is true aren't malicious, but what they're saying is can be, like, not nice? Isn't that a weird thing? Like, like yeah. to have malicious intent, you, like, want to be evil about something, right? Yeah. So it's weird because they're, like... They're saying things like, oh, this isn't, you know, they just so deeply believe in the Bible and and take it at face value for what it says. And that's what they, you know, preach essentially. But then it's like, oh, but they're not like trying to be mean about it, but it's what they believe so deeply and it is hurtful to other people. Anyway. Yeah. I read an article when I was researching all this Mm -hmm. um, that talked to some former members. Um, This is... This is from a website called 2fab.com. And I was like, the fuck is this? Uh, like, is this like some celebrity gossip like thing? And it is. It's like yeah. kind of celebrity gossip. But the title of the of the article is uh, Inside Justin Bieber's Church, Hill Songs, Culture of Homophobia and Anti-Feminism. <gasps> so I was like, whoa, this oh. is like, this is a lot. Um, and it was like, that's kind of a lot of... Uh, claims to be leveling against a church um that seems so progressive and cool and hip and whatever yeah so uh they actually interviewed people that used to go to the church and um one of them was is this guy named josh canfield uh who's a broadway actor and he was a former contestant on cbs's survivor Um, so he was in the church for almost a decade for nine years wow he went to the the new york branch of Hillsong and he knows Carl Lentz and was like pretty open with him about his sexuality. He ended up, uh, heading up the choir at Hillsong. He was like the, the, the head of the choir there. And, um, then he like went on survivor and kind of got a little famous. And I think that's, this is around 2014. And then he like, I think he was on survivor with his partner Oh. who is a member of the choir, uh, who also was at Hillsong. And so this all comes out in the media. And then Brian Houston, who is, as you guys remember, uh, is the the founder of Hillsong in mm-hmm. Australia. Mm-hmm. 
he got a little uncomfortable with the new attention that this brought to the church. So he came out with a statement claiming that Josh Canfield, who he refused to name and just simply called him a gay man in his statement, um, had kept his sexuality a secret from the church. Um, And Houston, Brian Houston said at the time, quote, several months ago when one of our choir directors made an unexpected public statement regarding his engagement to a man who sometimes sang in the choir, it was a complete surprise to us as well. Um, And then the church, the overarching like a statement from Hillsong said, their statement said, quote, Hillsong's position on homosexuality and gay marriage has not changed and is consistent with scripture. So then at that point, uh, Canfield claimed that he was forced to vacate his leadership role on stage at Hillsong, New York. Um, they uh, asked, they said, me? yeah, they said, uh, he said, Hillsong asked me to step down as choir director, uh, and as kind of a, I guess, compromise, uh, Carl Lentz persuaded him to take a behind the scenes role as a vocal coach for the choir. Um, that is fucking so rude. It's like, oh, we're going to fire you from this like role that you were in, but like, I guess you can still be a a vocal coach behind the scenes. That's so fun. Yeah. It's like, we're ashamed of you. So we're going to hide you like. Kind of yeah. in the back of things. Um, and it's bullshit, too, because it was like as soon as there was any kind of uh, media uh, on the fact that there's like a gay person in the, within the church, mm-hmm. uh, they were like, oh, no, 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 absolutely not. Um, where And Brian Houston was the one that was like vehemently against it. But then yeah. Carl Lentz was like, oh, but like still being a mealy mouth motherfucker. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no stay in the church like but just like go back here and do like behind yeah. the scenes work like we we like want your money and like the we like want people to think we like having you here but we you know still we need you to work for us yeah and like <laughs> we don't really believe like in we don't really believe that what you're doing is like right but oh we really want the press of having you here <laughs> like well and at that point it was like the damage was done when they like when Brian um, Houston came out with these statements, it was just like, okay, (laughs) I see what this is. Like you say you're accepting, you say the church is accepting of everybody, but as soon as somebody who's like a little bit higher profile, who this guy like, but was on survivor and like Broadway, whatever, uh, then, and it comes out that he's gay. You're, you're saying you didn't know. And that's, (laughs) like a bad thing and yeah I don't know and it's so, all fucked up it's all fucked up so uh Canfield says like he was very open with with uh Lentz about this whole th- about his sexuality and everything but it was Brian Houston ultimately who is the head of the church and so after he was ex- after Canfield was expelled as choir director he Brian Houston released another statement saying, quote, Hillsong Church welcomes all people, but does not affirm all lifestyles. <laughs> Put clearly, we do not affirm a gay lifestyle. And because of this, we do not knowingly have actively gay people in positions of leadership, either paid or unpaid. Huh. I mean, so that's that's pretty clear cut. Yeah, like, that's pretty clear. Yeah. Also, one or more people are lying about this. I don't know who, but have you ever had coworkers that are dating each other? Yeah. On the down low? Yeah. And people didn't know, and maybe you didn't know, but you always had a suspicion. I've had... Bitch, I always know. Oh, me too. Girl, I all... I'm... I... I should be a fucking detective. I'm so good at oh, reading yeah. body language and... Same. And putting together, I'm like... Hmm. I I, had I pick up on shit. Same. All the time. Oh my god. It's so and it makes me feel especially great. sexy stuff. Yeah. Like if there's sex happening between two people, ooh, I can smell it. I can smell it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Same. So you know there were people. Okay. So I think so. They're lying about not knowing. First of all, because I think if two people are dating and you're like together all the time, people are gonna notice. And then even if they they did hide it, which I don't think they did. Um, you would still be like, hmm, the choir director and this singer in the choir, they're making eyes at each other. They show up together at the same time. They both have coffee from the same place. 
when they show up at the same time in the morning. They're Someone's roommates. Like a, yeah, they're roommates. <laughs> <laughs> they're holding hands, which I don't know. That seems like hmm, maybe something's going on. Best friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, no, it's bullshit. It's, yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous. It's and uh, I think, um, yeah, we'll get into it in a, in a minute. But then yeah. there is another account from a, a, another former member Ooh. who is also openly gay uh, but and also openly side-eyed by, by Hillsong. Um, and openly he was what? Side-eyed? Yeah, side-eyed. <laughs> <laughs> um. And he was also interviewed for this two fab article. He was part of a London chapter of Hillsong. Um, he oh, was, he was a reporter. Yeah, he was a reporter, and he was openly gay. And he said that the topic of I mean, I he was out, and but he said that the topic of his sexuality was never, never really brought up, and it was like actually kind of avoided by by other people in the church. Mm-hmm. So. Until one day he was at a pa- one of the pastor's houses that uh, was at the church and he got into a deeper conversation about his, his sexuality with the pastor. Um, and he says, quote, when I asked the pastor about being gay, he told me that I shouldn't be so obsessed with identifying as gay, that it wasn't my fault. I was born that way, just like someone who is a drug addict, a pedophile, or someone with mental health problems. Oh, um, that's so fun. Wow. What a what a group to be lumped into. Yeah, cool. <laughs> um, and so this guy explained that the pa- he remembers the pastor telling him, just because you're born this way, it doesn't mean that you have to be this, quote, thing for the rest of your life. God can change you. Oh. Um, the fuck? Step off. You need to step off. Oh, my God. I, it's just, it, uh, it's so upsetting. So that's what this guy, this this guy from, who was in the London uh branch said and you know he sounded like a prick when he said it even more so than when you just read it because he had a fucking british accent so he was all like (laughs) he's very condescending about it yeah just because you're born this way it doesn't mean that you have to be this thing for the rest of your life god can change you (laughs) yeah oh my god dude i oh that's a punchable offense yeah i bet this guy i mean i i don't know this guy, I think, left pretty soon after that. He left the church pretty soon after that, but um, Good. it's pretty fucked. And then um, another incident happened pretty oh recently. Oh, my God. Jeez. This is... It keeps going. Um, so there's this guy named Trey Pearson, who's a former chart-topping Christian singer mm. who came out as gay a couple years ago, um, and that like shocked a lot of people. And he recently... Uh, tweeted about a moment that was captured um, in a video. Of, it was a Justin Bieber meeting and hugging a fan. Um, I think probably outside of the church um, after after services, and the fan was asking Justin Bieber, like, he's like, "I'm queer. Is this church cool? Like, would I be welcome here? I I I'm you know." haven't been welcome at a lot of churches and I'd really like to go back to church. And Justin Bieber was like, Oh my God, totally. Everybody's welcome. And was like, had this like, you know, nice conversation with this fan and it was really sweet, whatever. And then Trey Pearson saw this video and he was like, bitch, nah, this is not, (laughs) this is not, not what it is. And he said, uh, this is his tweet says, quote, this seems lovely, but it's a shame Hillsong is really not an affirming church. He wrote, uh, he said, you're welcome, but they think something is wrong with you and that you need to change. They wouldn't marry same sex couples or let you on leadership or staff. Um, but they'd love, but we'd love to see that change, um, is what he said. And so this, the writers at two fab, uh, contacted Trey to clarify his tweet. And he responded, uh, by calling them and he said, uh, quote, I've heard the same language from a number of homophobic Christians who've taken, who have talked to through the years. Um, they, they say all are welcome, but they would never sanction a gay marriage or allow an LGBTQ person to have a leadership role. Uh, 
evangelicals will tell anyone they're welcome to church. They'll welcome a queer person in the same way they welcome a drug addict. Like, we need to get them cleaned up. Um, yeah. And this is, to me, the whole heartbreaking crux of this whole thing. Um, Cause they like, yeah, it's no different from other religions in, in the sense that they like are against it. But what's different is that they pretend to be so welcoming and open so that you get people who might, might be looking for a community or may have come from like an upbringing that was religious and they're looking to, you know, they're looking to get back to church, to get back to church, but they want to be in one because maybe they've, you know, discovered more about who they are or they've opened up more about who they are. And they're looking for acceptance of that part of themselves, which is themselves, you know? And so they're just like looking to be accepted. And then they're like, yeah, no, we accept you. And then it's like, you get in there, you make friends, you become a part of the community. And then they're like, but about this thing that you, this thing, we can can fix you. Yeah. They're like, you know, either don't talk about, yeah, Yeah. don't talk about it or don't be that when you're here or let's try and fix you. Uh, Have you ever heard of conversion therapy? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And it's like, yeah, bitch, that is, does nothing. Yeah. All of this, oh, this just bothers me so much because it's all these people taking a stance on something that is built on fake stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, why are you, why are you casting people away based on principles that aren't real life? Like just, yeah. they're humans, be kind to them, let them be here, they want to be here. Like, they want to believe what you believe, too, but you're, like, telling them that it's wrong. It's so upsetting to me. It's so upsetting. Uh, <sighs> and this 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 singer, this Trey Pearson guy says, uh, this is his, like, last little thing that he says. Uh, it, quote, it's the strategy of the mega church model, trying to be the hip and cool church. Yeah. In my experience, the most conservative ones... Uh, like as in churches try the hardest to seem cool and liberal. They try to attract young people without talking about the issue of homophobia. Yeah. And he, um, he maintains that the reason churches like Hillsong have this like open door policy to the LGBT, LGBTQ plus community without actually affirming them as full members uh, of the community. Like they let them in the doors, but they don't like, you know, they're not, fully in it um he their main mission is salvation they say we we want to save you you're a sinner and that your lifestyle is wrong to make themselves feel better yeah yeah and Uh, also that all of that it's like i get it because they're it's like propaganda you know they're using all the parts that sound good to try and get as many young people in and indoctrinate them so that they can grow and make more money. Like at the end of the day, these churches are a business in my opinion. Yep. Like they're making a shitload of money and it's like a thousand percent. Yeah. You got to keep getting young people in. So you make, and, uh, the one last thing from this article that I found very interesting was another, uh, another former Hillsong member who is a writer named Tanya Levin. Uh, she, Tanya, Tanya, she <laughs> compares Bieber's role in the church to Tom Cruise in Scientology. Hell yeah, it is. Um, yeah. And and that's what's so sinister, too, about this is that, I mean, I'm no Bieber fan. I'm yeah. not a believer, if you will, but, <laughs> but I feel You're kind a of bad. You're a claymate. <laughs> I'm definitely not a claymate. <laughs> Ugh. I do love Clay Aiken, though. Oh. No, I don't. Oh, yeah, he, I don't. I have I don't know. I don't yeah. know what he's up to. Um, he he's being used by these people. Yeah, completely to get to get the the young the young youth in the door um, yeah. of the, of the church. So just and and is using other member other celebrities as you know kind of. Just like Scientology, to get people to recruit Hollywood celebrities. Yeah. More, more, more celebrities begat other celebrities who are like, yeah, I've been going to church lately. Like, you should come with me. It's so... And that's... You know what? That's fine. But I don't know. That's how it works. I mean, that's how it worked. I mean, when 
our friends are trying to get me to go to church and stuff. Like, that's yeah. how it is. It's like, oh, come. Like, we want to hang out with you. But you should come here. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to. Yeah. Uh, but, oh. This really annoyed me because I totally think the same thing. Like, that, like, Justin Bieber is being used as, like, a face of this church. Yeah. They're benefiting from being associated with him, for sure. And, Absolutely. Yeah, and I don't know if he gets any benefits from it. I would imagine he doesn't, except for maybe it helps his image in some way. I don't know. But uh, but Carl Lentz told Vice that he's like, that's ridiculous. Like, I... Uh, it's not the same thing like Scientology like you know they use like Tom Cruise in their promotional materials and like he's like a really big part of the of the church but like Justin Bieber never gets on stage our celebrities okay. never get on stage it's like it doesn't matter you're fucking Bitch, running around the with the stage him. is Instagram yeah ooh yeah yeah you know? it is that's where everyone's making their decisions like when Justin Bieber shows up in an Insta pick with uh the fucking what's his name the dude that's the head of the zoe church oh yeah and he's wearing like a zoe like shirt i think yeah. like there's a picture of him and the zoe dude uh and i think the church like has their own kind of brand of yeah. like oh streetwear streetwear they do. They church do. merch yeah hillsong yeah. has a weird hat yeah they when justin bieber shows up in an insta pic wearing something yeah. like that that is fucking product placement product placement that any goddamn company would give millions of dollars for yeah and these guys aren't they're not paying bieber to like wear this shit they're no. just like that's a it's, be- that's the best kind of advertising god damn that it's is fucking free it's free and they they're getting they're getting millions of dollars worth of of free marketing by him wearing their shit yep promoting their church all this shit yeah. it's crazy it's so i mean crazy. it it's the most i don't know it's so smart yeah it's so smart <laughs> like it's you like, gotta give it to him man dude it's like maniacal it's like oh man so it's like well thought out and advanced you hope and pray that a celebrity is caught eating at your restaurant or yeah. wearing wearing a pair of the shoes that you just designed or yeah. whatever the fuck. This, like, that does happen. And that's, like, fucking free. Like, whenever fucking any of, like, um, like Meghan Markle or, or, or Kate wears something from Topshop or something, oh that God. shit sells out in, like, two seconds. For months. It's, like, backordered for, like, years. Yeah. And that's, like... That's the dream. Um, yeah. And these 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 uh, hype priests are doing it all. And they're, it's free marketing for their churches. Anyway, Justin Bieber is the Tom Cruise to... <laughs> yeah, to Hillsong. That, to or, Hillsong. Yeah, Justin Bieber is... Justin Bieber to is to, to Hillsong what Tom Cruise is to Scientology. Yeah, nailed for it. Sure. <laughs> nailed it, yeah. Uh, okay, and now... This is where it gets real. Okay, we, you could sit here and you can listen to us be like, okay, they, of course, it's like a super conservative church. Yeah. Great. They don't really actually, they love the sinner, but hate the sin, blah, 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 blah. Ugh. Um, But Carl Lentz is still out there in those streets being wishy-washy as fuck about the actual values of the church. Yeah. Um, and while he's he's being, you know, not forthright about what's actually hap- what what the real true values of the, the church are, mm-hmm. uh, Brian Houston is he is not. He is he is very much like, no, we're yeah. very conservative. Yeah, <laughs> we don't want gay people doing anything in the church. Yeah, they like could you come, can come show up. They could show up and they can give us money, but we don't want them <laughs> working for the church. What an a, like, what an awful human. Yeah, he's and I mean that those statements that he he gave about um, uh, Canfield are pretty self explanatory. Like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and so while I was researching all the all the stuff about how they 
kind of are shitty to the LGBTQ community. Mm-hmm. I and and about how they actually compare gay people to pedophiles. Um, I found out that Brian Houston's father, Frank Houston, the original founder of the very original church that Hillsong came from, was a pedophile. Oh, he he was a kid diddler. He sure was. Oh no. Oh like, no. Yeah. Uh, hey diddle diddle. This fucking guy <laughs> molested <gasps> maybe more than eight little boys, oh like back God. in the seventies. Yeah. Uh, and Brian Houston fucking knew about it. Houston, he, we have a problem. Big time. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> I'm so proud of that. Right now. This is pretty good. This is pretty good. God damn it! It's so uh, fucked up, though. It's so dude, fucked up. It's so fucked up. So, um, yeah. Brian Houston's father, Frank Frank Houston, back um in like 1969, 1970, um was out had his church and he was doing his thing he was like the head of the church and as it turns out he um he molested several little boys Ugh. um there was an official like inquiry into this allegation uh one of the uh his victims testified that he was sexually abused by pastor frank starting in 1969, 1970, like I said, when he was about seven years old. And the abuse continued for several years. And then, you know, he moved on to other other children. Um, And then this particular victim, when he grew up, he confronted uh, Pastor Frank about it. Uh, Around 2000, I think, 1999 or 2000, he confronted him. Um, and they like met at a McDonald's or something. And he said that Frank tried to give him $10,000 to make him go away and like forget about the whole thing. Ew. Um, and Pastor Frank told him, uh, yeah, you'll get your money. Just like talk to my son to get it, get every, all the details straightened out or whatever. Okay. How come no one ever apologizes? Like, uh, not that it would make things okay, but like take some accountability. <laughs> Oh. You can't just pay people off. Yeah, he just he just said, "Get here, take some money." Yeah. Uh Brian will get it all straightened out. So he calls Brian and uh he he says this is what he claims Brian Houston said to him when he called him on the phone. He said, "Quote, you know it's all your fault all of this happened. You <gasps> tempted my father." That's oh. what Brian Houston allegedly said to the to the victim of his father's, his, this, this kid who was molested by his father. <sighs> Brian Houston is a cunt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like a real angry, scary Proper one. fucking cunt. <laughs> He's the worst of the worst. He's the worst. I mean, his dad was the worst of the worst, but he's the spawn of the worst. He's a shit, he's a shit stain. He uh, is a shit if, stain. If, even if he didn't actually say those exact words, like, he was pretty, it seems like he was just like, please go the fuck away. Um, and he did give him the money. Um, no note, nothing, uh, you know, no apology. He never apologized. He never took any responsibility for any of this. The church, like the main whole thing itself, they never... Um, acknowledged it they never um they actually just had frank houston he was allowed to resign but still collected a pension and he never he never faced any consequences for his actions is he dead now he's dead now well thank the lord he's in hell yeah (laughs) uh but not fun hell he's in scary hell he's yeah he's in yeah he's in he's in he's in like yeah you're being like flayed yeah, Hell. I don't know. Fuck. But yeah, so that this this whole thing was like swept under the rug completely. Um, and the in, the inquest happened like many, many years later in 2014, mm. I think. Mm. And um, it they pointed out the fact that 
like, hey, you knew about, you knew your father <gasps> did this. Like, Because you, you cut a check to this man. Yeah, Brian Houston admitted he knew about it yeah. for, for however long. Oh. Um, and he still, to this day, like, has never apologized or acknowledged the abuse. And uh, like I said, uh, no accountability no accountability has ever been taken for his father's actions by him or the church. Want to hear a fucked up thing I read about this? Yes. The only way he's acknowledged it is that he said his dad was homosexual. And that's Fuck why. him. Yeah. So, oh my yeah. God. That's what I read. He, it was like in an interview. Uh, he like, blames his, his father's being a pedophile on him being a homosexual. Essentially. Like he, God. like someone asked about the allegations and he's like, I don't have much to say about it. Only that I think my father was homosexual. And so he and doesn't that, like directly equate it, but it's like, but you're, this is where this is where that the whole thing goes back to where that the one guy, the former member of Hillsong who was in the, the London chapter, how they they uh, they make pedophilia and uh, homosexuality. They roll it into the same yeah, yeah. category. Yeah. And that's, they're lumping that's, it in. They lump it all together. And that's what they consider. It, that's part of their whole core values fucking suck my lumps it's so uh, it's so awful yeah and (sighs) all that said okay so we know brian houston is a piece of shit yeah but there is no fucking way in hell that carl lentz doesn't know that about all this oh no i'm sure yeah no no Are, are you kidding me they all know about this they all know about this yeah what and he like he never reads about you know you know he has like fucking Google alerts anytime Hill, Hill songs mentioned or anytime he's mentioned because he's that kind of person like oh, he yeah. wants to be famous so bad you could I mean you could just feel it like he wants to be famous but he's not uh not, I mean not with real amongst people. amongst the fucking the people who are part of this church like yeah. he's I he's mean, influential with like famous people. Yeah, but he um, wants to be like a list celebrity famous where he could just like show up at like yeah, at like Chateau Marmont and get like a table. But you know what? You're not. Yeah, exactly. Uh it's wild. I mean, I, I don't know. It even if Carl Lentz is like a, actual like good decent human. Mm-hmm. Um which, you know, I, I'm not <laughs> He could be good in some ways. He could be good in some ways like but I don't know how you continue to sell the principles of this church to people yeah. um, based on that foundation of garbage. Yeah. Uh, oh, of pedophilia. Yeah. So, yeah, I just don't know how you, you keep you keep it all together and you're, uh, you know, you think that you're doing the right thing. It's just... Mm-hmm. It's pretty fucked up. And I, again, like I'm not I'm not bashing religion. I don't think that I think religion's great for a lot of people. It's uh, it, I I'm Jewish. Mm-hmm. I converted to Judaism. I didn't grow up with any religion. Mm-hmm. Uh, my my parents, you know, were like, this is what not else? an important this is an important to us. We live our lives based on morals and values that we don't need to be like told how to behave by mm-hmm. a church. And I mean, that's cool. Um, I, I was raised great. I Mm -hmm. turned out good. Mm -hmm. I think (laughs) pretty good, pretty good, pretty good, pretty solid. Um, (laughs) you, you were raised without any religion too. Mm -hmm. You turned out pretty solid. Yeah. Um, pretty good. uh, And I just, I, I think though it's, it is so important to so many people to have, to have religion in their lives. And I, I think that's great. Uh, but this is, uh, this church is not the one. <laughs> mm. Well, I hate religion. And also, no, <laughs> you, but yes. But also, uh, anything, any, any place you go that tells you that people are like inherently bad, uh, you know, mm-hmm. that, that isn't accepting, fully accepting of people because of how they look or who they love or, you know, things that, things that they can't control, that's bad. 
that's yeah. not a good place. And that is not doing a good job of making people better. I don't yeah. think. And it just keeps a divide. And it's bad. And I don't like it. Yeah. <sighs> I just... Uh, and I think, too, like... Uh, I think this is, like, my final thoughts and feelings on all yeah. this. Yeah. Um, and then we'll stop talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I just think it's fucking wild that there's this new generation of mega church yeah that's so slick and seemingly open and chill but they're just as homophobic anti-choice and you know all around super conservative as any other mega church it's just so sneaky yeah and it sucks like i i it, it's so unfair that if you're if you're you know part of the lgbtq community that you can't feel safe going to a church you know you you think that you're welcome and you think that it is a safe place for you and then as it turns out they they their whole agenda is to is to change you or save you whatever it's such Um, a mind fuck honestly i feel like that does more harm than good it's it's re-traumatizing people um you know and and especially when it's like the shiny fucking beacon of seeming like seemingly liberal cool yeah. values and and especially when somebody that you know is like going there and they they seem cool they might not know of course i don't think people that are going to this church are know anything about this and yeah. um necessarily like think i i bet it's not even being preached or talked about and that's what's that's what's so sneaky about it is that yeah you're welcome and then as soon as you try to really and you know get into the community as much as you can and be yourself and be yourself it's like oh wait but like yeah mm, you're broken like this isn't you're not exactly this is not what the bible says and so let's let's fix you uh and that's like that's very re-traumatizing for people who have lived their lives trying to 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 be in a good place after being shunned possibly from you know, whatever community they were in before, you know, may, a lot of people have had to like cut, cut all ties with family members who shunned them, who treated them like shit be, when yeah. they came out. And yeah, this, like this shit makes me so mad for that reason. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I'd rather go to the church of Pete Wentz. I think <laughs> I don't even like that guy. And I don't even like that band that he's from, but anyway, oh, yeah. I'd rather go to his church probably. I like going to my reformed Jew- Jewish uh, <laughs> synagogue because yeah. literally that is, there's no, it's all, anyone and everyone is there. It's yeah. just like. Open. Very open. And it's yeah. not like, oh, but once you get in the door, you're like, there's something, it's not a bait and switch situation. It's yeah. like, nope, this is like, I don't know. Yeah. <sighs> it's so sad. I know. Well, anyway, well, yeah. fuck, fuck this shit. Uh, do your research. Um, if yeah. you do go to a church, like, you know, learn as much as you can about it and make sure it is in line with your, your values and your, your, um, things that you care about. And they yeah. are, are truly loving and accepting of everyone. Of all and of God's children. All of God's children. Everybody. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. know. And they don't. And they're not being mean to people. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But uh, we did get something great from all of this. And that is Don Cher. Don Cher. And I'm going to be your baby's Don Cher. <laughs> <laughs> Don Cher. Don Cher. Don Cher. Don Cher. <laughs> And also, if, like, I ever do want to go clubbing on a Sunday morning and all the clubs are closed, I'm just going to go to Pulse or whatever. But then I'm going to show up and I'm going to be, like, fucking on Quaaludes and shit. And they're going to be like, who's this bitch? And I'll be like, where the party at? Girls (laughs) don't know where the Bacardi at. (laughs) Um, Follow us on social media at DTFU Podcast everywhere. Yes, please. We would love for you to subscribe, rate, review on iTunes if that's your thing. Yeah, um, tell a friend. Yeah, tell a friend. Go to our website, dtfupodcast.com. Um, I think that's yeah, it. Yeah, just 
I think that's it, you guys. Uh, thanks for listening, as usual. Um, be excellent to yourselves mm-hmm. and to each other. Don't share, mon frère. <laughs> <laughs> Don't share. I can't. I love it so much. Damn, I, I think I'm. I think I might. I if I have a girl. Don't share. Don't share. <laughs> don't share, mon frere. <laughs> it's too good. All right. Alrighty. Uh, that's All right. it. Bye-bye. Bye bye.